we have already learned that there are many files inside database like control files, data files, read log files, and many more. Here, we'll be looking at key database files, understand their use, and learn how to find out locations. Inside database, there are many files, but outside database, we have three important files which you must know. First one is slash etc slash aura tap file. This is the file which contains list of Oracle databases on a server. Now here is an interview question. How will you find out the databases on a Linux server? You can simply say that by checking the aura tap file. Another question which is related to same question is how will you find out currently running databases on a server? You can simply say that by typing ps -EF grep pmon but if the database is not running then you will get those details under slash etc or a tap file let us look at the or a tap file on our server cat slash etc slash or a tab in this file we have the list of databases whether they are running or not that is separate case but this is the database SID the Oracle home and whether you want to start the database when server comes up or not you can put Y or N the default is N if you create a new database a new entry will be added below this prod DB entry inside this same file now the next file that we have is slash etc slash aura inst dot loc now this is the file which contains the Oracle inventory location now what is the inventory location? Inventory location is nothing but a file which contains the details of all the Oracle products installed on a server. So let us go ahead and see this file and understand what is Aura INST.LOC file. Let us cat slash etc slash Aura INST.LOC. We can see that we have an inventory pointer in this file. Let us go to this location inventory pointer and if you just do ls lrt this contents.xml this is a folder inside this folder you have something called inventory.xml now if you cat this inventory.xml in this xml file you will have list of all the oracle projects that are installed on a server for example in our case we have only one Oracle product that is Oracle home that is installed on this server right this is just the name given to the product installation and this is our Oracle home location likewise if you perform multiple Oracle software installations you will have multiple entries in this file in real time you might also see other Oracle products installation than just Oracle database this file helps you find out such details. Next we have Oracle home underscore DBS location. This is the location which contains parameter files for respective databases. It also contains the password files too. Let us go ahead and look at the Oracle home and DBS location slash DBS ls hyphen LRT now all the files that begin with init those are parameter file that is p file and all the files that begin with sp file are nothing but the sp file so clearly we can see that there are two parameter files over here and as we know this location will also contain the password file we see password file for proddb database also so till now we have seen three important files which resides outside the database. Next we have the parameter file. This is very important file in order to start the database. And as we have already seen the parameter files reside under Oracle home DBS location. The parameter file will contain the parameters to start the database instance. For example how much memory is to be allocated and how much RAM has to be used for the Oracle database. All those details will reside under the parameter file. See, if you understand it this way, when you start your database, somebody has to tell 
the server that okay please allocate so much ram to oracle please allocate so much resources to oracle so that oracle can perform now all those allocation parameters reside under this parameter file now because your database goes from multiple startup stages after parameter file is read next the control files are read now in this sequence the parameter file also contains the location of control files so that first parameter file is read and when your database is moving to the next stage that is known as mount stage it will get the location of control files from the parameter file itself so that's why your parameter files will also contain the control file locations now we have parameter files which is available in two formats that is p file it's a text format and second one is sp file it is in binary format now you might be surprised like why we have two parameter files simple most of the db activities you need to read the parameter file like in in cloning refreshes or other activities if you have a binary file you won't be able to read the file right so that's why what we can do is we can create a p file and change the contents then perform our activity and later we can convert p file to sp file one more very important benefit of sp file is there are something called as dynamic parameters while your database is up and running you can still modify or change some parameters but if you are using p file if you have to change any parameter you must shut down your database change the parameter and start up your database because of these kind of issues p files are not used in real time and also let's take you have both p file and sp file for a database eventually if you start your database first preference will be given for sp file if sp file is not available oracle will be started using the parameter file that is p file also p file naming convention is init sid.ora and sp file naming convention is sp file sid.ora you can check the sp file location inside sql plus via below command show parameter sp file let us check the location of sp file for our prod db database show parameter sp file now you can see this is sp file and this is the location if you look at this location it is nothing but your oracle home and then dbs location sometimes people will think that if you can type show parameter sp file then there might also be show parameter p file remember there is no command like this one when you type p file it will perform a search with all the parameters containing the word p file so eventually you will get sp file as the output and don't get confused that the oracle is using or this instance is using p file if your instance is using p file this parameter sp file will be blank also as i said it is very easy to create one file from the another file so when your database is using sp file and if you want to create a p file you can just issue the command create p file from sp file and also when you perform cloning and refreshes and later on after your cloning is done you want to create an sp file from the p file then you can issue the command create sp file from p file very simple commands and you can run these commands at any stage of the database when we say any stage whether it is no mount stage mount stage open stage or let's take you don't even start your database then also these commands will work the next important file that we have is control file now this is the file which is read second in the startup sequence the first file that is read is parameter file parameter file contains the location of control files and from that location in the second stage of startup sequence control files are read next we can check the control file locations via 
this query. Let us go ahead and check the locations of the control files. Select name from P$ control file. Now we can see that we have two control files in this database. Do not worry. You might think like why do we have two control files? Why don't we have one control file? We'll understand this concept when we are under multiplexing. For now, just understand this database is running on these two control files. Now the control files contain the database details like what is the name of the database, what is the SCN number. SCN is nothing but system change number. Also your control file will contain the checkpoint number. Your control file also has the locations of the data files inside the database and also the redo log files. When you take ARM and backup, the backup information is stored in database control file. So control file is pretty important which governs the database because it has the SCN number which is very important. It also contains the checkpoint number. When you start the database, what Oracle will do is it will cross verify this SCN number which is there in your control file and check this SCN number with the data file headers. If the SCN number is same everywhere, like in your control file and in your data files, then your database will open cleanly. The next type of files that we have inside the database, it is nothing but the data files. In simple terms, these are the files which contains the user data or the system data itself. These are the third files read in the database startup sequence. It contains the database metadata and user data. We know that there are something called as base tables. There are views on base tables, data dictionary views, dynamic performance views, and also the user data. All this resides in, under the data files. Also, the data files are linked to table spaces. You cannot access the data files directly. You, as a DBA, or as a user, you create your objects. Those objects are created inside the table spaces and then table spaces are directly linked to the data files. Now, how do we find out the location of the data files in my database? Very simple. This is the command we'll be using. Select name from v$ data file. Let us see where our prodb database data files reside. Select name from v$ data file. We can clearly see that all our data files reside under this location, user1, app, oracle, or data, and product. We can clearly see that all our data files reside under this location, user1, app, oracle, or data, and prodb. So these are some of the key files which you should know and you should also know how to find out the locations.